um, Mr. Shine here. And I'm Lights Out Ace. Um, we are going to be doing a show match series right now with Ra5 and Hoopa F for the win. And we're going to be spectating both sides. So you'll see all the action. And I think we'll be having that start in just a minute. All right, like... we're about to jump into match one. As soon as we load. Yeah, I mean, you have to bribe the guards first. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't let you in to see the match. That's true. Those cards can be pretty expensive. Yeah, and tickets are impossible to procure legally. <laughs> Alright, I think I have the duel. Alright, All right. so Ra5 is playing his signature zoo deck. He's written many articles on the website about this deck. And Hoopa is playing what looks like Jab's Hunter List. Yeah, so we got. We're looking good. And actually, yeah, Hoopa has a pretty good. They like both have a starting. strong Undertaker start. Yeah, in fact. Oh boy. Hopa, I mean, Hopa has a. Oh no, he has the, the duo. Man, both of them with multiple death rattle in the beginning. That was a very key draw of the one drop there, so his <laughs> Undertaker can outpace Rock Fives. Yeah. It's like one of those just crippling points I remember when, when you're in constructed. Like, you know, which, which Undertaker will prevail in the beginning of this game? That could actually have like a huge impact on this. Like right here, this is going to be pretty crushing. Oh yeah, double one drop on turn two to have his Undertaker eat up Hulpos. Oof. Like, just amazing. Yeah, I know like, looks like both these decks, uh, well, I think probably, especially Ra Fives, is focused on maintaining that board. It looks like, well, both pretty much need it now. The Jab Hunter list is really good at coming from behind against Zoo and winning if it can pull off a Knife Juggler or Unleash the Hounds combo. Without that combo, we have <clears> a very <throat> tough time winning this matchup, and with it, it's very hard to lose. Not so he true. just needs to hang on until he draws a knife juggler, or if Raphael's whole board continues having one health like this, he can just use it as a one-sided wrath. Yeah, and it looks like he might have a good chance. Yeah, that that unleash looks like it's going to be pretty tasty right now. I guess the oh the haunted one. Ooh, golden king. Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, I find that web spinner you actually shouldn't use a golden because they know what card you picked. Ooh, next level. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. It's hard to work mind games into a digital game, but that's yeah. one you can do. There's a few of them. All right, so this is interesting. I mean, he does, he definitely can activate his death rail here, but I guess you probably don't do much with that haunted creeper. Because he doesn't have his coin, any, you know, there's no concern about the hound master. Well, and creeper actually does more damage if you kill it, so I'd be very surprised if yeah. he doesn't go face here. Oh, interesting. Huh. I'm surprised he did that. Now he opens... Yeah, the gnome dies for free anyways. But, I mean, he might be playing around Unleash the Hounds. This yeah. is some top-level zoo play. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he's got a... All right. Oh, that was that's excellent as an activator for his Nerubian Egg. Oh, yeah, that's true. He'll Which also out. blunt the effectiveness of Unleash. Yeah. Also, here, do you, you just... I mean, Muckle is... I know it's not very good when you have... When the enemy has a board. Like, I mean, just one banana will trade with that... I mean, that's a real problem right now with that Undertaker. Situations like this are why Undertaker is so broken. It's a one-drop yeah. that killed your opponent's one-drop and now can trade for your legendary three-drop <laughs> if you desire. Yeah. He has to blow Unleash the Hounds just to kill that Undertaker. Yeah, that's that's rough. And I suppose... I mean, do you think... Would that be... Would you play... Is that worth putting Unleash there? Or do you think Kill Command would have been... I mean, you, you really you aren't going to win the board without the Unleash combo, but... You don't need to win the board if you have kill commands and just kill them. That's true. I and guess it, it is true. Like, really, I think he's playing the control game here because he has a Savina on high main. So he knows that he can win if the game goes long. Because high main will 4 for 1 the zoo deck at least. Yeah, that's a good point. There's not many good ways they can't. I mean, I don't think. I don't know if this one. This doesn't run silence. I don't. I'm not sure what the deck list for this is actually. But, well, I can check. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Never mind. I won't check. I'll, I'll keep it open. <laughs> Uh, all right, pull it up here. It looks like he is not running Iron Beagle. Yeah. Yeah, so there's like nothing, I guess. I mean, the, the Dreadlord is all right, I suppose, but... Or the Doomguard, rather. Oof. There's another activator for that egg. And both of these uh, Death Battle minions for Raw 5 are going to spawn more knives when they die. Yeah. And that's definitely what he's going for, drawing a card here instead of Doomguarding. Oh, yep, he's going to... Oh, boy. This he's is going to be definitely knives taking everywhere. the board here. So How do you like these apples on your head? <laughs> yeah. He's just throwing my knives, man. Have you seen that? I have not seen it. Oh, it's a, it's a, it was something on Reddit. It was, there was like a stop animation thing where 
it was a pretty animated knife juggler. It was pretty sweet. But for another day, I suppose. Rock yeah. 5, though. I Unless mean, he gets very unlucky, this is going to clear the board. Yeah. And, I mean, he's just... There's not much looking at Hoopa's hand that he can... I mean, he might be forced to burn a kill command next turn to try to... I mean, I feel like that knife juggler on the board, the longer it stays, maybe he'll just do a trade. Oh, that's interesting. Instead of running the haunted creeper into the into there to spawn two knives... Oh, no. Yeah, instead, instead oh, of yeah. running the haunted creeper into spawn two knives, he just taunted hmm. up the Nerubian and went face. I guess he has a Doom Guard in hand, so he's hoping to end the game in short that's order. True, yeah. Pilot of Shredder is my pick for the best card in Goblins vs. Gnomes. Yeah, I mean... Oh, that one is amazing. Like, I, it's true, like, you know, some of the two yeah. drops, obviously, that it spawns aren't the greatest, but, like, you can just... It's yeah. so sticky, and, like, I mean, that four attack... Yeah, it's I mean, it's like Harvest Golem kind of hopped up on steroids, I feel like. Uh, much he more was aggression. trying to save that kill command for face, but he had to blow up the kill and a ruby in there. Yeah, the good news for him, though, is that he does have that high main in hand. So if there's a way, I mean... But well, he... I anticipate a, a, a Flame Imp Defender of Argus to taunt up both the non-knife juggler minions. He can throw knives forever. That's true. He might even then uh, kill the Leoc for free with the Haunted Creeper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would probably run into it, I think. Oh, oh he yeah. is taunting up the Knife Juggler. Oh, interesting. Wow. And that, that, make, that play is a lot weaker to unleash. That's true. I wonder if he's thinking. But, it, I mean, he... Raw 5 still has, like, a really commanding state right now. Like, there's... That bow can also kill the Knife Juggler now. But yeah, but then I he's taking know if he can afford to damage. take that much damage. And then he can't play high main. Yeah. But if he plays high main, little does he know, there's a Doom Guard lurking in Raw 5's hand. And you can clear out the high main yeah. without losing any cards, yeah. which I don't know if I've ever seen. <laughs> In fact, right now, I mean, he actually could, I mean, Hoopa could lose this turn because the Doom Guard will spawn a knife and then he'll have, you know, multiple, he has those two ones there. So three knives are going to be flying and, you know, he already has, you know, eight damage on board plus the Doom Guard. Yeah, and he does have to, to bowl the knife juggling. Yeah. But those or, bananas, those also push him closer yeah. to lethal. In fact, I think he lost. I think he actually lost right now. Oh, yeah, Four this... damage, nine, eleven for the two. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's game. Oof. Well, unless he discards the bananas. Then... Oh, no. You can oh, play, just play the, the bananas, bananas first. first then yeah. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. rough. And I think that all came down to that early, um, you know, just the battles from the Undertakers trying to get the start of this one. Yep, the bigger Undertaker. Went... What? He missed it. He definitely missed it. He did. He, was... he took a second to count. Oh, it's the pressure. <laughs> Yeah, you're the playing in front of literally match. tens of people right now. <laughs> Dozens of us. <laughs> oh. Well, Wait, I... Dr. Boom. You're playing Dr. Boom in his zoo list? Dr. Boom really is ubiquitous. Yeah. I was funny, I was looking through recent decks, I think on Hearthstone players, and like every deck is pretty much, yep, Dr. Boom. Can it fit a seven drop? If it can, Dr. Boom is the person that's going to be there. Well, I don't think zoo can fit a seven drop normally. You're playing Doom Guards. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah, I wonder what he cut for that. Oh, he has. Maybe his. No, his early game. Hmm. It looks like he cut Harvest Golem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna do it so a little bit more potential late game. I think now he realizes <laughs> that, he, that he missed Lethal. Yeah. Probably face palming, but he's not gonna but get it doesn't, punished. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna matter, unfortunately. There's no Hound Masters in Hoopla's deck. Yep. There are no Unleash the Hounds in his hand. Yeah, and even that, you know, he's sitting at 1 HP because, of, you know, even though he cleared the board right now, which, you know, he has the egg, and looks like... Yeah, there technically isn't lethal on board, but there's a Doom Guard and a Defender of Argus with Hoople's yes. name on it. Please don't miss lethal this time, Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, he's going with... Okay. Going with the top deck to play. Um, I'm disappointed in the lack of BM. <laughs> All right, well, Hope countered by yes. conceding immediately. <laughs> All right, and with that, looks like Raphaib takes the first one with his Warlock. I think we will be moving into the next match here. All right, looks like the second game is starting. Tighten up the hinges. Yep. Looks like oh, Hope has a Golden Warlock and a Golden Hunter. Ooh. This guy's played a lot of Hearthstone. <laughs> Man, jeez. I wish I could get there. I think I have like 200 wins on my Hunter or something. That's about as far as I can get. Yeah, I'm a little over halfway there with my Rogue, and everybody else is hovering around 150 to 200. Uh, I play all the classes too evenly. Yeah. Alright, so Hoopa starts out with a very strong Flame Up. He has his Undertaker, but no 
no death rattle to follow up. And Although you do get hit for three, which against Hunter can be relevant. That's a good point, yeah. And Mad Scientist is an excellent answer because it can trade and then pop out another trap to get a two for one. Yeah, that's a good point. Mad Scientist, that was, I think that's one of the strongest Nax cards that came out, just because it, it's oh. so much tempo. I mean, he has a Voidwalker to protect, though, and it also protects his uh, Undertaker, although he doesn't have any death rattles in hand. That's true. And he's definitely going to get that Shattered Sun Cleric will get some value on the board here, it looks like. Oh, this is a lot different Hunter deck. He's got BGH and Houndmaster. Yeah, BGH. I've never seen BGH and Hunter before. No. It's pretty but, wild. I mean, you can't really afford to run Hunter's Mark without the absurd card draw of Starving Buzzard anymore. Yeah. You just run out of gas too quickly. The poor Starving Buzzard. I used to... Everyone, you, well, everyone's most loved slash most hated card <laughs> that now is so unplayable. So he's going to pump his Undertaker, but not with a Death Rattle minion. Yeah, yeah. let's just pretend Shattered Sun Death Rattle. Yeah, well, I mean, Hoopa's definitely doing what he wants to do with, with the zoo, which is, you know, establishing that board and putting them, putting himself in a good position here. Explosive Ooh. Trap, all right. That's real nice. I predict that he's going to run that Haunted Creeper into Undertaker, put it in Explosive Trap range. Yeah, probably hoping. Of course, you know, we know that there's one more Death Rattle in Hoopa's hand, but still, it's probably... Well, the good part about that play, though, is if Hoopa plays around the Explosive Trap by attacking his minions, then Raw 5 can just pass and essentially bluff Unleash the Hounds. Ah, so if sneaky. So the way it would work is that all of Hoopa's minions would be at 1 or 2 health, so if he attacks, they'll die to Explosive Trap. But if he doesn't attack, then Raw 5 can get a million guys with Unleash the Hounds and, still, and kill all of his board while still retaining the Explosive Trap. Yeah, that's a good point. Interesting, I... What do, what do you think the merits would have been to play the knife juggler there and then bringing that out? That would certainly telegraph a snake trap, yeah. which might cause him to go face. Yeah. But he wants to save it to get value with Unleash the Hounds. I suppose. There's another count with Unleash the Hounds. It's going to be like old school Hunter, <laughs> except instead of Buzzard Unleash, scavenging hanging, it'll be Juggler Unleash. Oh, man. Ooh, well, he definitely knows he should know what trap it is now, unless he's expecting to snipe, I can't imagine. Oh, geez, no respect for the explosive trap. Oh. He just plays the Lepernome right into it. All right. Although I suppose he has an implosion in hand to reload. Yeah, that's a good and that doom guard doesn't hurt either. No, right on time. Although implosion's such a strong card too, it'd be a shame to pass that one up. All right. Well, so many, so many beast activations. Yeah, just missing that one card, the unleash. Yeah, it's so awkward here. He doesn't have any really good plays because no. animal companion floats a mana. Hyena can't kill anything. So it looks like he's just going to leave all of Hopo's minions at death to explosive trap range. Yeah. And not waste any more cards. So, so in the end of the day, the Undertaker stands alone. <laughs> yes. And if he wants to play the Haunted Creeper out, he can get two 1-1s, one I suppose. But, <laughs> yeah, that's... I can't imagine him holding back here. He doesn't gain anything from taking two a turn from the Hunter Hero Power. Right. Though he does gain from getting a 4-4 four, four in a That is a good... Yes. That's, that's not too bad. Best possible draw there. Yeah, although... <laughs> Raw 5 gives him a well played. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's pretty low. I mean, he's definitely... I mean, obviously, as a, as a Warlock, you know, you, you're going to have to start thinking about how many more times you can tap. And we know that we have a kill command in Raw 5's hand. Obviously, he has the Houndmaster, so he can get a, a quick taunt if needed. And I know that, you know, outside of, obviously, the Doom Guard is pretty good. But there's not many ways that a, a zoo can get around a taunt instead of just kind of smashing right through it. So we will... Yeah, so I suppose he could web spinner Houndmaster here to put up a roadblock, but that still dies to the Nerubian. Yeah. But it does put some warm bodies on there. And the web spinner is not card disadvantage when it dies. Exactly. Yeah, so it'll eat something. I mean. He's it... probably hoping for an iron for a grizzly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, yeah, an implosion coming out here. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's see what the roll is. Ooh. All right, that's pretty. Ooh. Wow, that. That actually hurts. hurts yeah. Now he's gonna lose one of his four power minions. Yeah, that's too bad. That attack makes you really weak to unleash the hounds. Yeah. I mean, this board is just way. Oh, the hungry crab. Yeah. I suppose if Rot Five had it, he would have used it a couple yeah. turns ago. Yeah. I think. I think if I was Rot Five here, I would just play the knife juggler and just try to throw a bunch of stuff on the board now. He does have several one drops in hand. Yeah. You can go crab, clockwork gnome, scavenging hyena. Yeah, you can clear most of it. Alternatively, you can just get a Misha. And... <laughs> yeah, you can hope for the Misha. That's true. Right, he's going for the... So he should he should attack the 
Undertaker first here, because he's going to attack Undertaker no matter yeah. what. Yeah, you don't want to waste knives. Yep, that's a good play. I'm just going to hope to get that 4-1. Ooh, the Hungry Crab. If only... Hungry Crab is actually fine on this board <laughs> anyways, which is crazy, but... All right, one imp down. That crab is hungry for imps now. Yes. Murlocs are the metagames need to turn to fresher prey. <laughs> yeah, there aren't too many Murlocs around. Murloc Shaman, maybe someday. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, Deptralon is, is good in its own right. Ooh, that was not a knife that he wanted to see. Hey, he's got one more shot. If he hits the Nerubi in here, he's actually winning. Oh, oh, that's really unlucky. So, I believe that he's actually just dead to Doomguard here. Yep. Yeah. Ouch. Hope was not going to miss lethal. No. Oof. That was really bad beast to Raw 5, never drawing an Unleash. Yeah. I, I think if he had drawn an Unleash at any point, he would have won that game. Yeah, that one would have swung. And, and Pupa was pretty low in life too, so yeah, that would have been could have been a turnaround. But nope, that is this one goes to Hoopa FTW. Well, we will see which one can... You know, most these both these games have been really... You know, that, that early game has been so important to determine who ends up pulling it out. All right, so... Raw 5's on top now, Hoopa FGW's on the bottom. Does Hoopa have every class golden? Wow. <laughs> well, they both have wild growth in the opening hand. Yeah. So. And we got the Innervate on top, so I wonder if Raw 5's going to see if he can get something else. Yeah, that's a very interesting hand from Raw 5. If you, if you like, keep the Innervate, you don't really have anything to ramp into, but Yeah. But, I guess you're hoping. Yeah. All right, so he does keep all three, which, you know, that could pay off. We'll see what he has. He has that Mech Warper, and then he has the... Um, you know, the th obviously the, the technician that can get some good value here. All right. So he's going to growth to get a guaranteed four drop next turn. Because if he plays Mech Warper and then Hoopa rats it, he's in a real awkward spot where he has to play a naked Tinkertown technician. Yeah. And nobody wants to see that. No. <laughs> Ugh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at this guy. He definitely needs his clothes on. <laughs> oh, Dr. Boom. Oh, there's a good innervate target. Yep. Yeah. So this is interesting. So he's going to play Paladin Shredder this turn, and next turn, Dr. Boom. Oh Fortunately, Hoopa has a swipe to answer half of that. Yeah. Yeah, he has the double swipe. It's interesting that both of them had their their wild growth at the start of this game. So things... Oh, interesting. Oh, he's going to he Mech just... Warper Innervate? He's going wide instead of going big, I suppose. Huh. So he still has a play next turn, but it's not Dr. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... I, I really like the idea of getting a, a turn 5 Dr. Boom out. I suppose it is, yeah, it's, it's weak to swipe, but... Alright, well now Hoopa has a big dude. Well, be... that's a pretty great draw. Yeah. yeah. Let's him one for one with the Druid of the Claw. Yeah, not too bad. Establish the board more. Now, I, I did not see this. Let's see, do they have any combo? Oh yeah, one. Alright, looks like... A little bit of combo. Yeah, one Force of Nature, yeah. two Savage Roars in both decks. All right. Obviously, that's the thing that, you know, everyone's afraid of the combo when it comes to the Druid, that 14 HP, and that red mark, where you never know. I, I always feel like every time I'm at that point when I play a Druid, I'm always, you know, like, whatever I can do to clear the board, I, I try to do, and then I think sometimes that can really throw you off because you're doing so much to avoid getting... Sometimes you just have to cross your fingers and hope they don't have it. Yeah. It's true. Oh, geez, so Hoople's going to be way ahead on cards here. So unless this Dr. Boom gets a 3 or 4 for one, Ra5 is going to need a combo to finish the game before the card advantage of Hoople buries him. Yeah. Oh, he's, fortunately, though, he's gotten some good value from those technicians both times here. Oh, yeah, he gets to play Tinkertown, and then he still has three mana left over for the pilot and Yeah. I wonder if he does that. Do you think you just trade out to try to get that Drake? Maybe give him one of the... Okay, so Ra5 is playing for card advantage here too. Instead of uh, trading away two of his minions for the Azure Drake and playing the Shredder to be ahead on board, he's just taunting up the 4 4 so they trade evenly. Yeah. So Ra5 is was... going to need to draw an Ancient of Lore to keep up in this game. Yeah, that was interesting. I was actually wondering about giving the attack bonus and then using hero ability to clear that. Because, well, I mean, we know, of course, there's the two swipes, so that's going to be, um, well, I suppose, yeah, clearing a few of this clears his board. So Hoopa. That's a pretty strong play, and obviously we know that he has another swipe in hand, which... And so against swipe, the, yeah, boost the attack of one of his minions and hero power to finish off the Drake would have been a lot better. Yeah, but I have a feeling I know what's coming <laughs> out this turn. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's always Dr. Boom. 
It writes so many wrongs. I think it's so funny how Dr. Boom was just a car that people were not fully, ex you know, no one knew, but it's such a strong card. Okay, so he's playing around the second swipe here. Interesting. Because if he plays Boom there, then attack with Drake, swipe, and clear out the Boom. Yeah. It's only a two for one, and kind of only a one for one because Drake already drew a card. Yeah, that's a good point. Hoopa is, yeah, Hoopa now definitely has a great position. Even though he doesn't have the board right now, I mean, he still has the card advantage, and he has, you know, obviously he has his Ancient of Lore, which is huge. Oh, interesting. Oh, All right. wow. So Ra 5 is going to have the initiative. <laughs> yes. I'm surprised that he didn't just play Ancient of Lore because it's not going to lose in a fight. Well, I mean, of course, there's a spare part yeah. hand, but Hoopa doesn't know that. Yeah. And he would have gotten to draw two cards, but he chooses a safe play and. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to Dr. Boom now, don't you? Yeah. Like. Yeah, and Hoopa doesn't have a great answer. I mean, he can swipe it and play the Shredder, but then he's still going to take a bunch of damage and. Yeah, he can't be in combo range. So, yeah, that's a pretty tough situation to be in. I think. I think you do, though, or at least I feel like. It's yeah, probably worth just getting those boom bots out. You take some face damage, sure, but this is one of those situations you're just talking about where if he has it, you can't that's possibly true. win, so you just have to cross your fingers. Yeah, that's a good point. And he knows that one of the cards in Ra 5's hand is a spare part, so it would have to be a top decked combo. Yeah, that's true. So and I mean, how lucky can a guy be? Yeah, right. We say that now. Well, obviously we know he doesn't have the other part, but <laughs> yeah, we have the advantage of omnipotence here. Yes, or omniscience, I suppose. I mean, man. This game is so much easier when you know what the other person has in their hand, right? It's like, oh, what are people thinking? Of course that's what you play. You don't have to worry about the combo. He doesn't have it. So he's thinking of playing Mech Whopper and just flooding the board with Spider Tank and Keeper of the Grove, or Pilot Shredder, more likely. Yeah. I, I, would, I would swipe first, and then I would drop the Mech Whopper and the Spider yeah, Tank. Yeah, the thing is, if you swipe, you deny the value of the Boom Bots because they just hit your face a little bit. Yeah, and so this now... way, the Boom Bots are going to deal damage to real creatures. Yeah. Oh, he's actually trying to mitigate the damage from Force Savage, so if he had uh -huh. it, it would only be, uh, let's see, 14 plus 9 plus... Yeah. Well... It would, if... it would have still been lethal even though they didn't hit yeah. face. So the, that play did not play around Force Nature Savage Order, so I'm not sure why he did that over swiping. Yeah, unless he's trying to set up like a Drew to the Claw swipe next turn or something. I'm not... Ancient Lore. Huh. I mean, he has, the, he has the Ancient Lore if he wants to use the heal. I mean, I feel like at this point, if he can get around um, Dr. Boom... You know, he, he does have the card advantage he could try to play for the late game, although certainly Rot 5 is starting to put a bit of pressure on. Ooh. Oof, he had face with both Boom Bots. That's kind of rough. If yeah. that hit the Mech Warper, then suddenly Rot 5 actually would have been in a dominating position. Yeah. Whereas now, he kind of has to attack the Mech Warper with Dr. Boom. Yeah, it looks like it, but still, you know, I think... Hoopa is, you know, now he... Ooh, he's oh, he's going face. Oh, that's not... Right, well, I think he's correctly identified that he's not going to win on cards. Yeah. And he has to do something. Yeah, I think that's probably smart. And, I mean, we know that Hoopa doesn't have a perfect answer to that. Well, I guess a swipe Keeper of the Grove attack, but that's yeah. losing a lot of value to kill one yeah. minion. And you take, you know, an extra six damage then after that. With the he could also hero power and attack it, but I don't think he's going to want to take six to the face. No. Yeah, this is yeah, not the greatest situation. And of course, you know, there is he is he is definitely low life. We know that there's no combo pieces with the Rock oh, 5 yet. But... That is a huge draw, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> no, that's yeah. No no worries now as far as card card advantage, because this will really help. I think he'll I'll see if he gets any of the pieces of the combo from that. Well now Rock 5 is so far ahead on life that he might just be able to push lethal, and that's some more damage to the face. Yeah. Gonna do a little more searching. And yeah, so Hoopa's definitely on a clock right now. He has to find a way to... And I feel like this next turn, I would I would almost certainly try to put a Drew to the Claw or some sort of taunt up. You just have to try to mitigate some of this damage coming in. There's an Azur Drake, so he's not falling far behind on cards. No. We know he has the... If he wants to do the combo with the Drake and the Swipe... Yeah, where Hoopa's sitting at four HP. Yeah, that actually could go really well here if if Hoopa runs the Keeper of the Groves into each other, then that Grove will have yep only two health left, and so he'll die as collateral damage to that swipe. Oof. 
Oh boy. So we'll see if there's any way that Hope I can stabilize here. He, of course, is. I mean, I think obviously that. You might actually swipe the spider tank and uh, run yeah. the Ancient of Lore into the Druid of the Claw. I think so. Yeah, I think you run it and you swipe, clear the board, and Hope is sitting at six HP. Well, you have two minions in play. Yeah. And we know that Hope doesn't have any taunts. You should probably hand. draw first if you're gonna do that. Good point. You might draw an intervene. Or wrath. Yeah, so like, it didn't change yeah. the play, but still always nice to sequence correctly. Yes. Alright. Ooh, I think you need to use that probably to clear right here. Or you I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean gaining five life there isn't gonna save you from No. Anything. You take nine. So probably this in Shredder and and then he's kind of he's just hoping, I think, at this yeah. point. Force of nature from Rot Five lend it. Yeah. That would put him to one. Put him into one. He'll, he's probably just going to Azure Drake. And then yeah. uh, use Azure Drake to... So this, a spell power Wrath to draw a card and then hero power to finish off the Shredder's front half. Because Rough Five has a big life buffer, so he can afford to do that. Just fishing for a Force of Nature or a Savage Roar. Either one is lethal. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised at this point that he doesn't have any of the pieces. I mean, it's through half the deck. There's a few more, but I think... I mean, it looks like he might not even need to get them at this point to put this game away. And I think that Hopa's... I wonder now... When, well, oh, so that's actually... He has another direct damage potential with the yeah, 4 damage So I charge. think you just say screw it to value and charge face. Yep, I think so. That's how you play Druid. And Hopa's already used, I think, two of his swipes, too. So these guys are going to be killed the old-fashioned way. All right. Yeah, so if he gains five life here and kills a minion... He is technically still alive. That's not going to do scavenging much. Scavenging Ooze. Echoes of the last two games. Yeah. Not Scavenging Ooze, Scavenging Hyena. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's the only play you have, and I know you, you don't want to do that with Ancient, but... It's nice you have the option. Exactly, yeah. At least you can. He's All get... the cards in the world don't matter if you're dead. Yep. <laughs> but little does he know, there's another Druid of the Claw in Rot 5's hand, and it's giving yeah. him the well-played, so he can concede to save time, of course. Yes, yes. Very kind. <laughs> so let's see if he goes for a wrath draw just to draw it out. Ooh. Make Hoopa sweat. <laughs> these show matches, these intense. Oh. oh, it looks like he's going for it. Oh. He's debating oh, whether he wants to be Making him on him camera. <laughs> and he's going for it. <laughs> <didn't even> <laughs> Not even everybody even knows the, the measure of the man. Yeah, yes. Oh, he even gets the style points, Drew to the Claw, Innervate, Savage Roar. Hit him for 14. Who, need, mean, who needs Force of Nature? There you go. Yep. The alternative way to do the combo. Alright, and with that, it looks and like... And Hope was letting him do it. After Rot 5 conceded right away in game one. <laughs> what a gentleman. What a gentleman, yes. <laughs> Alright. Oh, he could even maximize the BM by having that druid kill the Ancient of Lore, and then finishing him off with Malfurion's face. Ah. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I got my icons mixed up. Ah. Uh, they're right. both picking Hunter. Oh boy. Alright. Hoop on top, uh, five on the bottom. Good this old really Undertaker. really something about the state of Hunter. It's been nerfed <laughs> four times, and it's still the go-to deck in right. crunch time. Oh, wow. Rot 5 has an amazing hand here. Two copies of Mad Scientist and Undertaker. Yeah, and Hoopa with that trap. Well, I guess they both get a trap. That's not something you really want to see when you have Mad Scientist in your well, deck. Well, Hoopa doesn't even have a one-drop, which is... Yeah. Well, that deck, the Jab Hunter deck, does only play six one-drops, you really, really want one. Yeah. Although he does have the Knife Juggler Unleash combo, so he's definitely going to save that for turn five. Yeah, interesting. And Freezing Trap, this Undertaker. Oh. The value. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, again, the strength of the Undertaker that people don't even want to deal with this one drop. So I wonder if he thinks... Oh, and Rot 5 is running Snake Trap, too. He's got a lot of spicy cards in this deck. Yeah. It's definitely pretty old school. I mean, snake Trap, Houndmaster. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if he's going to... Wait, I don't know if we've seen a high made from his deck either, but I would assume it's there. Yeah, probably. I mean, I feel like, yeah, most Hunter decks... Such a good card. It's so hard to like to not yeah. have one of them. Well, you need it to win the warrior matchup. Yeah. Oh, he's not attacking. He's gonna save it. Oh, he, so he really wanted to trigger it with Mad Scientist, but now he gets punished super hard because he's gonna have to trigger that trap, and it's gonna give Hoopa an extra bow charge. Yeah. The brutality. <laughs> the horror. 
We also have Raphael with his his haunted creeper. Potentially yeah, being he does get to, to put the Undertaker out of bow range, at yeah. the very least. So that extra attack isn't going to matter too much. Yeah. Yeah, he's just putting out a bunch of targets that he doesn't want to hit with Eagle Hornbow. That's true. Is he just going to sit here? Probably. Yeah. He thinks that's freezing. Well, he's already committed to playing on Freezing Trap. Yeah. But, I mean, this plays right into the Juggler Unleash. Oh, boy. He can't do it yet, but soon. Hope also has that, that extra Eagle Horn bow in hand, which, I mean, it's such a great card, but I know you don't really want it to be clogging you up a little. You can only attack once per turn. Yep. Oh, so he's probably going to replay a bow here. Attack with bow, replay bow, just to get the extra charge. Oh, yeah. And if he hits the Haunted Creeper, that really, really telegraphs the Juggler Unleash. So yeah. I almost think you can't do that. Yeah, I wonder if he'd be... And it's also, you know, obviously those two, the freezing trap will be... You know, you don't really want to freeze back a 1-1 spider. I'm not generally a fan of that. Soundmaster for Rat 5 is definitely going to get some value this next turn. He does. Well, oh, he's unleashing now. He doesn't even want to wait for Knife Juggler. Oh. It, it, That's not a bad idea. Yeah, it continues that... making it so that that Undertaker can't attack. Yeah. You have a one-mana Yeti, I don't care. It can't yeah. attack me. Yep, and that explosive trap is not a big deal. Get rid of a one hound. But unfortunately for Hoopo, Rafive has even more death battle minions to lay out there. That's true. How do you deal with a 6 7 Undertaker? You don't really. You just die. You know, yeah, no Hunter's Mark, I don't think. He's got this deck. Uh, not in Jab's list, which no. we know is what Hoopo is running. Yeah. You can play out a high main, and that Undertaker will kill it for free. I mean, I suppose that the Death Battle Hyenas can then run into it to finish the job, but Still, when though. a one drop trades for your super value six drop, you know you're having a bad game. Yeah. That's. That would make someone cry. Alright. Well, yep, that. <laughs> Undertaker is still growing. And Rafa keeps putting those minions on the board that are going to threaten to trigger that freezing trap and leave the. Yeah, the Undertaker alive, so. And this turn he finally ran out of answers. Yeah, not looking too great here. Let's see, yeah. Lothab, so of course, you... doesn't even trade with the... So his five drop now is, <laughs> is defeated. Outclassed by one drops. Outclassed. So this Eagle Horn Bow can kill the Knife Juggler, and they get another charge when the Web Spinner attacks. So you know, he's going to take the five, well, six, once he plays the Mad Scientist, damage from this Undertaker, but Hoopa will be able to establish some board control because his minions will be unmolested. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think, yeah, I mean, he has, there's no way of getting both the knife juggler getting a knife out to clear maybe the 1-1 one, one and clearing the knife juggler. So I think I think you have to bow here. And we, we also know, you know, at the very least at this point, you're not going to clear the whole board. So at least your bow's going to get a secret, an additional charge from the secret. Although with the Undertaker that big breathing down your neck, you can't really afford to use it to kill minions. That's true. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I bet Hopa wishes he had a big game hunter <laughs> right. right now. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> right there, big gaming in The Undertaker. Man, I don't know if I've ever seen that. It seems like that would have been on Trollden or something. Yeah, probably would be, yeah. You know, even if that, you know, I wouldn't even be mad at that point, of course. Like, it'd be, it'd be sad to lose your own Undertaker to a big game hunter, but, like, the fact that it would have gotten there in the first place. Man. It's really an achievement in itself. It is, yeah. He might just replay that web spinner. And mad scientists, and go in with the under with the CGH range <laughs> Undertaker. Yeah, I mean that puts him down. Put this hope down to fourteen. And Rock Five has not even been hit once, which is not what you want to be seen when you are a hunter and trying to get that aggression. Oh, he lands on a snake trap. So if this creeper goes in to kill the web spinner, it's going to create a lot of power. And without another unleash. Hoopa will lose to that extra pressure. Yeah, I don't know if there's much that he can really do at this point. And he's gonna he's gonna run into it. Yeah, that I think that always feels bad. Yep. I think this one might be all she wrote. Jungle yeah. Panther, that's a playable card. Hunter List ran that for a while. Yeah, I, it's, it's I mean, can't can't you know? It's hard to say no to four damage that is very difficult to deal with. Especially if you wanted to have it sit and wait for the Houndmaster or something. But at this point, I don't think it even matters <laughs> for Rot 5. We have the Under Ogre, the 6 7. It's even <laughs> buffed more. In fact, 8, 10. I don't think so he has he rolls a yet, Liak? Oh, yeah, I suppose a Liak could do it. 
Well, or wait. Or a Or 10. To... 9, 11. Sometimes you actually want Liak. Yeah. That's going to be 15 exactly. Um. No, almost. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, almost, I'm but I'm it embarrassed now. <laughs> I, I was I was gonna say it, but I was like, but I might not know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he killed one of the yeah. one of the means. I mean, that's one of the cardinal rules of commentating: never do math on air. <laughs> yeah. That's... I'm an actuary, and I can't do math on yeah. air. <laughs> math? Who needs it? All right. Well, this will be the one the, the for fun run then. This last one here, for pride. Right. We, we'll have a. We'll see if there's some redemption in store. Hope I can pull it out. All right, so we go back to the druid, the druid match. Yeah, rat five one last time. All right, and here. All right, so innervate in one hand, wild growth in the other. Well, we got a turn one yeti here. Ooh, the scariest of yetis. But we also ooh, looks like so rat five will probably get that piloted shredder out on turn three, four. And then, yeah, turn scary Yeti. What do you think? Do you like do you like the mechanical Yeti better than standard Yeti? I mean, I know that you can give the other person a spare part, but oh, he didn't. Like... He didn't play the Yeti turn one. I guess he wants to mech warper and then play the Yeti on turn two. Oh, yeah, or which I do, mean, he's do... okay, but you could have gone Yeti and mech warper. Right? Yeah, it seems like a sequencing error. Huh. Unless he was afraid of the rat, well, no, yeah. the Yeti wouldn't, wouldn't matter with the Yeti. Yeah, well, so he's saving the coin, I guess, but... I think he just would have put on a lot more pressure with Yeti into Mech Whipper. Yeah. Huh. Maybe he has a, a plan. Piloted Shredder, of course, is always strong. I mean, he's clearly played more Druid than I have. So. <laughs> yeah, as his golden yeah, portrait displays. All right. So he'll probably be able to trade... Oh! And that's oh. that's pretty sneaky. <laughs> I don't even know that card's name. Uh, the the Gilblin Stalker, I think. Oh yeah, old yes. Gilblin. Yeah. Not How could bad. I forget? I know. <laughs> he's not too bad in the arena because he's uh, yeah, the fact that you can choose when you want to attack with him is pretty nice. Uh, oh, we could get out Ancient Allure right here. That's definitely what I would do. Oh yeah, and you even get to draw two cards to recoup the loss of cards from yeah. the it. That's true. And that five five can't really be dealt with. Um, you know, I mean, he could do the, the trade his whole board in for it, but it's not something he really wants to do. And we know, of course, that Hoopa will only have I guess have the alternative Yeti. would be to Savage Roar Hero Power and kill both of his minions, but... Yeah, that'd, that'd be hard to do. Of <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah. You get a 5-5, five, five, you get two more cards to fill up your hand. Yeah, and you don't have to use the Giblin right away. Get a stealth. Yeah, you can hang out. Giblin is fine, just chilling in his little... Shaded swamp or wherever he lives. Let's see. Underwater, I guess. <laughs> Goblins with gills? Yeah. If heels? How fancy. No, gills. Oh, gills. I thought you said heels. <laughs> like, oh, pretty. <laughs> yeah, are there any female goblins in Hearthstone? I don't know. I think the, the Kazan Mystic or something. Oh, yeah, Kazan Mystic, yep. Oh. All right. Good job, Blizzard. So... Equal opportunity, yeah. diversity. Yes. <laughs> Promoting Female all goblins. genders and races. Yes. And beasts of all kinds. Trees. Oh, Ancient of Lore is a tree. Yeah. <laughs> all right, swipes it away. If you think about it, Mech Druid is just really weird. Like you have trees fighting alongside constructs. Yeah, it's like it's really incongruous. It's like Lord of the Rings meets and is like. What the Ents and the Goblins battle each other, but now they're all on the same team. And it's also, I feel like the playstyle works pretty well because obviously the mechs, the mech warper can, you know, boost things out quickly, and then you have Druid with Innervate that can boost things out quickly. Yeah, I mean, like, really... like we said earlier, it's it's another wild growth effect. Yeah. That you get your turn three, four drop more often. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Rat 5 has two Savage Roars now. Doesn't have an easy way to deal with a 4 5, though. No. I wonder if he's just going to taunt this Charge up. Charge and... in and hero power? Yeah, he could. I suppose he could clear it and just hit. I mean, he has the option, too, of course, of luring. Okay, so he's just, just taunting. 
All right, that's fine. He has those two Savage Roars later as well, I suppose, which... He could oh. run these two little guys in in Hero Power as well. Hmm. I don't know, I just don't like taunting that Jew to the Claw, because he might have the Black Knight, and then you just lose the game. Ah, that's a good point. I do like, though... I mean, even though he put it down, I like not trading for this Yeti. I think it's important to get that extra damage on Hoba's face, especially since he has those two Savage Roars. I kill, you know, each of those minions that he keeps on his board to apply pressure can can mean a lot more damage later on here. So does he Ancient to draw some cards, or does he use the Keeper to kill the Taunter? Clear through. Oh, it looks like that's what he's going to do. So. It does mean his board is going to be a lot weaker next turn, though. Yeah, that's true. And Hopa does have the advantage of those two Ancients of Lores in hand, so that's that's a nice security blanket, I feel like. You know, you know, even though you only have two cards now, you don't really just have two cards. And Ra 5 drew, draw, drew the awkward wild growth, which says, in two turns you can play this to draw yeah, a card. Yeah. It's like, wait for a little bit, but then I'll be somewhat useful to cycle. Alright, well, is that... I mean, he could... He could Mech Yeti Savage Roar. Yeah. To put some damage in the face. And uh, get some use out of one of those Savage Roars. Because you really don't want to have two copies of that in hand when your opponent's at 24. Yeah, I think you do this. You clear a Hoopa's board. And then, yeah, put a little, like, a little bit of extra damage on. Oh, he's, interesting. He's opting to avoid taking the extra face damage. Wow, surprising. Huh. Well, I mean, I think he is still in a strong position now. Nope. <laughs> Should have hit a power oh. there. Oh, unless he wants the reversing switch to oh. make that mech warper live. Interesting. Right. Okay, I guess that's Five, playing six. around Azure Drake Innervate Swipe. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah, interesting. Well, we'll see how it works out for him. <laughs> well, the thing is, I hope it has a reversing switch of his own, so he can sw ah, he swap right yes. back. Can... I, I suppose it does make the plus one... The plus two uh, from the Savage Lord permanent. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Actually, yeah, that's actually really smart. I didn't think about that. He now has a very strong Yeti. Actually, is it, there isn't a 5-6 minion in Hearthstone. Not you yet. You might be right. Wait, no, there is. Um, the Silver Hand, or not the Silver Hand, uh, the Guardian for the Paladin. The, oh, the, Guardian yeah. of Kings. Guardian of Kings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But not many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking of five and six reps. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think to look up to seven. Yeah. Not many sevens have that, that sort of stat, I suppose. All right, well, so Ra 5, of course, can't fully clear unless he wants to Savage Roar and clear the remainder, but I can't imagine he's going to do that. Unless, you know, the 4-3 drops like a Gnomish Inventor or something. Well, drawing two cards isn't horrible. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to think about going face. Yeah, I mean, you're not dead to Force of Nature Savage Roar. Like, that's 14 plus 6, which would only be 20. Yeah. So you would have one precious health point left. Yeah, I think it's smart. And with the Savage Roar of your own, you're threatening lethal if he doesn't kill one of your minions. Yeah. And it's going to be... But it looks like Keeper of the Grove is going to do just that. Yes. Ah, well, that's probably not going to be too useful. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty terrible. If he had his, I mean... If he had an, a oh, force of nature or suddenly something. it's really good. So he's going to make that plus two, plus, oh my. plus two attack from the flame tank permanent and then freeze the oh, Wow, Getting good use out of those spare parts. Yeah, that's thinking on your feet right there. That's one thing I do like about the Shredders is that there's a lot of cards that people don't normally play that you suddenly have to deal with. I mean, I guess flame tank is used in shamans, but... Yeah, your Druid opponent doesn't usually flame tank Not usually, no, I know. That's a combo of force of nature. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, like, yeah, force of nature, have a bunch of them run in. It's a build your own combo right there. Let's put him alongside the flame tongue. Do a bunch of trading. Dude, yeah, you, um, you have to cool him, that keeper of the girl. He's, <laughs> he's on the war. Settle pad. down. Settle down, keeper. He's probably going to silence the flame tongue then. Or he could silence his own 5 5 if he wants to. Oh, yeah, that's clear way the flame tongue. That's way better. Yeah, I'd rather have a dead minion than a. Yeah. Oh, or he can just kill it and not worry about Savage Roar. Huh. But he. Is it better force nature, anyways? Yeah, I guess it does the same. Well, it almost does the same thing. I think actually, I, I would have definitely silent or silenced that ancient. Yeah, because, that costs you two more mana yeah. to gain one life. But 
Spare parts are really interesting, yeah. Like you're saying, this is another thing that makes you think on your feet. Yeah, you can't you can't always prepare. You don't know exactly what they'll have. A lot of card draw from Hopa. Uh, he is, he's dead to combo. Yeah, oh yeah. And he actually might 7 net. Yeah, he's just dead. Yeah, 5 then, yeah. That looks like that's. And by combo, the game. I mean the card 7 drawer by itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, single, the single piece, the com, is right here. <laughs> All right, so I don't think... Well, we'll see if Ra5... All right, I think he sees it. Yeah, he's not going to miscount again. No. Well yeah, Hope right. never had time to use those ancients. He was always put into awkward places where yeah. he had to play four and five drops to remove Ra5's things. Yeah. That was... All right, and with that, we wrap up the show matches here. Looks like Ra5... Champion of week Champion. one. All right, and I think we might see if we can get. Oh no, I don't think we can do the yeah, our, <laughs> interview right uh, now. Our recording isn't technical yeah. difficulties. Well, just thanks for playing, guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah, hope you enjoy this, and we'll be trying to get more of these out on a, a weekly slash semi-weekly, bi-weekly. <laughs> we'll see how it actually ends up. Yeah. Coming out, but um, yeah. Well, again, I've been Mr. Shine, and I'm Lysa Race. Bye.